Hello and welcome to another edition of Talking Business. I'm Joey Trombley along with Calvin Castine from Hometown Cable. And it's been a while since Calvin and I have done a, an edition of Talking Business, but we're here at Dragoon's Farm Equipment. It is their 65th anniversary of being in business. And this is their annual, at least for the last 20 something years, it's been an annual uh, open house, uh, free pancakes and sausage. and. They open it up to the community and it starts at 10 o'clock in the morning and as Calvin was scanning the area, I got here about five of, I think Calvin was here a little bit earlier and the cars here uh, for the people for this open house is really impressive. Uh, it starts at 10 and people have been showing up way before that and this is an annual tradition in Moores with Dragoon's Farm Equipment, 65th anniversary, annual, uh, open house and we're going to go through and, and talk to Jack and the boys and and see what's going on inside but uh, it's really a nice thing they do for the community and for their customers it's it's an appreciation day really is what it's all about so we appreciate you uh, watching this episode of Talking Business well Calvin we made it inside and we're into their their garage part here and we have Wayne Dragoon and as I said outside this is their 65th anniversary and when you've been here with that longevity, you don't do it alone. You you hire people, you have employees, and there's gonna be a few awards given out today, not only for longevity, but dedication. And Wayne and, and, and uh, Gary and his dad, they'll all tell you this doesn't happen without dedicated employees. And we have some milestones going on here today, Wayne, right? Yes, and definitely what you just said, you know, the business, you know, to keep it open since 1953, it's all about the employees, you know, and dedication, and, uh, you know, we just appreciate everything. And right now we have uh, Lee Barkham, one of my technicians, and he's been here 25 years. Lee, 25 years. So I want to present wow. this clock to Lee in dedication of 25 years of service at Dragoon's Farm Equipment. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lee, congratulations. Thanks. That is pretty impressive. So 25 years here. Yeah. Did you ever think that would happen 25 years uh, ago? Not really. <laughs> but you obviously love what you do here. Yes. And, and what is your role here at Dragons? A uh, little bit of everything. You know, I do mostly the, you know, the welding fabrication and take care of like the corn planters, choppers. So and, and and so, when you first started, were you in this role or you grew to this role? Uh, more or less grew to it, I guess. Okay. Yep. And started uh, off as like a helper. Yeah. Yeah. Just over the years, this is what happens. It makes you wonder where time goes, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Well, that's quite a milestone for you, and congratulations. That's, oh, that's thank pretty you. impressive. Thank you. I and appreciate, appreciate you come, and appreciate you coming on camera. Yeah. <laughs> that's the bad part. <laughs> that's the bad part. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. I appreciate it. Out, this is not the pharmacist. This is not Lee Barcom, the pharmacist. Yeah, well, no, he's not the only yeah. Lee Barcom. I've in the gotten North them country. phone calls. <laughs> So what's your thoughts on the opiate crisis? No, just, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Thank you. Now I'm going to grab, and I'll grab Raymond. Okay. Keep All right. So I know that they have many um, vendors here, and I know, Calvin, you said earlier today, and I'm not sure if you're going to get it on film, but uh, they're going to be doing a Kubota, uh, I don't know, presentation outside some today? Kind of a, some kind of a demonstration going a demonstration. on outside today. Okay. But, you know, today it's supposed to be pretty good weather-wise. Well, so I will I'll say I've done a couple on. of these with not as many as uh, Gordy did or, or uh, Bob, yeah. but, and I've seen some of these where the, and I've been in some of these where the <laughs> weather hasn't been really that uh, conducive for us to be outside, but today's not a bad day. No, no, we got another one here, Raymond. Well, here we are, okay. So Wayne, I know there's like all kinds of awards going on today. We met Lee, met and, I, and you got more going on. Now I rounded up Raymond. So. Okay, so let's talk about Raymond. Raymond's been here for 25 years full time. A dedicated technician. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I have this clock to present to you for 25 years of service. Well, thank you. And also Raymond was here before that part time through the program through the school. So. Part time He's that. been here, right? Even when he was in high school, he was. Now, Wayne, I got to question this because Raymond looks like he's 25, so there's no way that Raymond could have been here. I didn't take my hat off yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Raymond, what's your role here? I'm mechanic. Uh, Technician. 
tractors. Expert. So was that, and you grew into that position too? Yeah, when I first started here, I was 15 and uh, sweeping the floor, dumping the garbages, washing the tractors, and now I'm fixing the tractors, putting the tractors, uh, so, equipment. So where did that come from? I mean, is it, you decided one day you wanted to work on machines and you set them off to schooling? Where, where did that yeah, come well, from? Well, I grew up on a farm and uh, my father had, had a farm in town and, uh, and I loved the tractors, you know, you know, a little kid with shiny tractors, well, who oh, wouldn't love that? So right. I talked to Wayne one day and said, hey, anyway, I, can just, I could come after school? And they said yes, and been here ever since. So I, I assume you've gone off to like technician oh. school and that kind of stuff, especially with the equipment change through the years. I mean, there must be major changes through the years, right? Yeah, definitely. And Raymond's done some traveling for sure. So is it like cars now? It's, it's all uh, electronics and yeah. you got to plug oh, in and... Computer. Oh yeah, we have a laptop in the, in the brick room there. And, okay. Uh, the cabling for all equipment. You know, even even the the equipment has computers on it now and Monitor. horn planners and it's just... So do you, I mean, as many years as you've done this, do you get stumped at all sometimes oh. when a machine Oh yeah, there's, there's, there's sometimes, that, you know, the computer might tell you something that's wrong with tractor and there's every once in a while it's like, um, you got to think farther than what the computer says. Yeah. And to, to fix a problem. So you go back into the memory lane there and yeah, yeah. back in the archives and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had, you know, Case IH has a good uh, uh, system there where you can uh, go on their um, site yeah. and ask questions or even see uh, what other technicians have asked questions and gave answers and. Now, are you able to go on their site and maybe even do some troubleshooting on the site too? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. possible yeah. also? Yeah. Yeah. It's impressive. It's it's not your typical old day mechanics that no. you used to think of with your carburetors and that kind of no, stuff. for sure. It's, this is really a fine-tuned profession right now. Exactly. Definitely. What you guys do. Exactly. When Raymond first started, you grabbed the toolboxes and that's the only thing you brought on a service call. Sure. Now you bring a smaller toolbox. Definitely don't forget the computer. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, the computer is probably the first thing I load in the tractor. In right. Truck. Wow. Well, and we, yeah, we pretty, much, we pretty much do it all. Right? Air condition, uh, GPS. So every engines. so so every day is probably a little different for you. Oh yeah. You no, don't know what's not usually always the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So and how many technicians do you have? Six. Six technicians total. Wow. Yeah. On this end. Yeah. Okay. And Gary on the other end, he'll be discussing that. Sure. Further down the okay. Road. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Nice award. Thank you. All right. Thank you again, Raymond. Thank you, Thank you Jack, for me. Appreciate it. So, Wayne, we're not going to let you run away yet. We still got to, I told you, it's a 30 minutes, it's 30 minutes here. Anymore? You got one more? Got one more. Oh, my, oh, Wayne, go get them. Go right, get them. Me, I'll keep bloviating as you go. Well, we'll, we'll point out that the Raymond Fair has kind of followed the, the Dragoon family here. The, you know, Jack and Wayne have both been very involved in the fire department. And I think uh, Wayne has served as fire chief. I'm not sure if Jack did, although he's probably served every other office and I think Raymond has been fire chief also oh really yeah so they wow. so it's very handy with the fire station right across the road from yeah from here yeah that's for sure yeah, we're just talking about the fire department stuff and the, and the fire comes and the boys on the fire to go to to jump into the truck no, that's it <laughs> and you're still in the fire department no nope. you were though I was in the fire department yeah uh, okay. distinguished member now I was in for 15 years now we were just talking was your dad ever the chief Yes. He was. Okay. And I was chief, yeah. You were chief too. Wow. Was Gary in the fire department? No. Too? He never. He didn't never, want to follow that footsteps. No, he never got involved in that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Chris. The, the, oh, we got one of them coming? Yeah, we got Chris All coming. Right. All right. So this is your third one. He's third one. He's hustling right over here. He's running to get right on the camera. And sorry, we did this five years ago with Chris. We presented him with a 25 year clock. And now Chris has been here 30 years of dedicated five service. Years. Wow. No clock, but just a little well, thank you. token of our appreciation for, like I said, it's the thank employees you. that makes the Well, business. congratulations. Yep, thank you. 30 years. Yep. Wow. Where does the time go? I don't know. I bet it seemed like yesterday you were just getting that clock. Yeah. Well, it drags on. <laughs> so so what was your, what's your role here? Uh, mechanic, uh, set up new equipment and delivery. So you're one of the technicians too? Yeah. And do all the main delivery. Truck, main truck driver. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Delivery. So when you first came here, what was your role when you first started? If you can remember that far back. Tires. Tires. Yeah. You just changed tires? Fixed tires and whatever needed to be done. And then you just grew into this role? Got out of the tires and more into the mechanic part and setting up new equipment. And got my CDL license and the other truck driver was retiring, so I took over his place. And so are you more time in the shop or you're on the road more? The road quite a bit. 
like to be on the road more, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you like the road work better than the, the shop? Yeah, I, I do. Yeah. I enjoy being outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, understandable. Yeah. So any words of wisdom after 30 years? No, uh, I've seen a lot of different farms leave and we've got a lot less farms now. And, that is sad. That you is know, true. We're traveling sad. farther and farther to get our business. And, you know, and, and you bring up a good point. When you started this, well, 65 years, and maybe you don't know the number, but how many family farms oh, were there? Just in our small community, probably 250. Just, and we say small, just we say our, the northern tier. Right, yeah, just, you don't have to get, you don't have to go very right. far for that. Right. And, and staying in the county, now we're running three, four counties over, yeah. you know, Because south. you're forced to do that. So how, now, in our little area, we said 250, what are we at now? In, in the county? I don't know the exact number, probably, is there 30 farms? 30. Like, Forty, and that's in the county. Know, I mean, yeah. And that's not counting just the northern, that's not counting the northern tier. All right. There's, there's probably uh, five active farms in the north, north country. Well, I know yeah, you speak, right and it used to be 250. Oh, yeah, definitely. You go around, you look at all the empty, wow. empty farms. But that's that, sad. That, that, very sad. You know, it's getting away from the family farm and the horse stuff. So, as, and as that happened, you guys had to diversify through the years, too. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot different when my grandfather started. Of course. You know, just small tractors and. Right. Everybody, a lot of, a lot of farms. A lot of now. hobby farmers. Yeah. A lot sure. more hobby farmers now. Yeah. Mm. But, I mean, that's part of a business, staying on top of oh. what's happening, yeah. adjusting to the market conditions. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. Well, congratulations and thanks right. for coming on the camera. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, Chris. Yep. So, Wayne, we were talking off well, camera before you got on the camera. When we uh, This starts at 10 in the morning. 10, yes. And I was joking that you got the fire department controlling traffic out there. I couldn't believe the number of cars here already. What time are people showing up? Around nine, I guess. <laughs> Everybody's thinking the same thing. We'll beat the big, uh, big line uh, for pancakes and sausage. But uh, I'm glad, you know, a beautiful day for it. Oh, it's considering gorgeous, right? uh, what we have seen in the past year. But uh, right. everybody's just trying to get early to, so I don't have to wait in line too, too long. So I know you have a lot of representatives show up today too for this appreciation yep. day. So about how many uh, different vendors would be here today? Well, probably six of our different companies that we, uh, you know, we deal with. That the company reps will be here. Okay. You know, answer any questions or any 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 issues with equipment you have now. This is the time to uh, you know discuss that and learn about all the newer products. Sure. Sure. But. Uh, and I'm sure they enjoy coming. They must come from all over. Place. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, and these and what they do is they just go from you know through the winter, mm -hmm. different open houses all over, farm shows. Yeah. So right now they're kind of winding down because we're getting close to spring. But, but, they, you, but you're the only one I think that has at least around here that has an open house like this, right? Or is there anybody else? Have no, it? there's uh, different dealerships they have do? it. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, there is. You know, it's not just us, but uh, and like uh, getting back to that, this is. The reason we do this, Customer Appreciation Day, you know, we appreciate the customers, you know, the previous customers and appreciate the business, looking for new customers. Of course, yeah. And, uh, well, and, and you said something else, too, that as the years have gone on, you've had to expand the counties, right? Oh, definitely. You know, so how, so what, what is your, your uh, area that you serve now? Well, we go quite a bit into Franklin County. Okay. And then you know it, do you hit st morris at all of some okay not a major amount but there is some we do we go up towards canton way yeah i assume you go down toward essex yep and you got essex and not too much you know across the water not in sure. vermont and obviously pretty much uh the borders are cut off point to the north so so you can't you can't uh market to canada or no they, it's a very yeah rate? it's a tough situation there yeah but. probably their laws too Oh, to, definitely. To protect their industry up there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Assuming. For sure. Okay. And about how far south would you go? You know, uh, Willsboro, Westport. Okay. That area. So, and it, so it's a little farther west that you expand more than yes. the south. Yes, you're right. Okay. All right. And then this open house, I assume they come from all these areas? Oh, yeah. yeah. We send out invitations, quite a bit of advertising, yeah. Definitely. And like getting back to, you know, like so since 1953. Right. It's, you know, it's all dedicated employees has gotten yeah. us where we are today. You know, I just uh, like to thank all the employees, all the volunteer help to put this day on because without the volunteers, we wouldn't be able to do it. Cause it 
just take too much with the cooking and the serving and so you got so you have so you have the three generations is there a fourth generation yes there is okay yeah my grandfather started the business right my father yep myself and gary and jennifer and, right. and now my son has worked full time here your son did so it's four generations yeah and his son comes in and <laughs> oh really likes to ride the pedal tractors and that. So. Well, that's how you all started, <laughs> right? Start somewhere. Right. I'm thinking that when your little grandson, your your grandpa was looking at you, you're probably in here playing around. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm sure definitely. you weren't getting in the way at all. Oh back no, then. no, no, you were just cute little Wayne out there outside, doing thing. driving the cadets and running into stuff. So now it's the years pass, and now it's your grandson doing the oh, same yeah. thing. Time is, <laughs> and you want to change it for the world. Oh no, definitely. Not. <laughs> no, no like, that's that's for sure. That's for sure. And, but like I say, getting back to it, you know, I also want to thank Hometown Gable, Calvin, Joey for, for putting this on and the viewers to be able to see, you know, what's going on. Because I'm sure you're going to be going outside and oh, yeah, checking definitely. out what we have. But, but uh, it's definitely, this is Calvin, obviously. It's now 30... We're completing my 35th year. 35th year, starting your 36th, yeah. coming up. It's the 28th, 29th time here. 29th, 29th, okay. Time, so now, of course. 90, 90, so okay, and that started with 90. Bob Venn, as we Bob all well know. Yes. God love Bob Venn. Uh, and then it was Gordy. Yes. So the credit goes to those two guys. I'm just a fill-in for the uh, last couple years. So, but they are they are the icons of hometown cable. There's well, no doubt about it. But hey, you're doing a excellent job filling <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I appreciate it, Wayne. But, I mean, and of course, you and I go way back to the high oh, school definitely days. definitely high school. Yeah. So now we're starting to show our. Oh, <laughs> Except you have you have more hair than I do, yeah. so you, you you have some pretty good genes there. That, I don't know about that part. But, but yeah, def, definitely uh, changes since uh, high school for sure. Oh but, my god, uh, yeah, it, it it does change. It's but, just the way it goes. But definitely, but you know, just appreciate you just coming and oh, you're uh, welcome. And appreciating all the volunteer help and our employee help because without that, this day would not be possible. And I know I asked this. I know I've asked this before. How long to prep for an event like this? Pretty much uh, today's Tuesday. We start like Thursday. Okay. So and that start... means I'm assuming this shop doesn't look this clean all the time. No, we had uh, <laughs> you know the floors got all power washed and you know equipment that was apart. You just buckle it up a little bit to get it out or try and hurry up and put what but you, you can to drive it. But you pretty much have this down to a science, right? Now, as you, far as preparation, you're right? Because we you know this date is set you know right. months in advance, so we know kind of. Of course. How much time do we have to get this tractor out or that piece of equipment? Right. So, and then just based on that, but basically Thursday and then. And it's not like you aren't running your regular business during that period of time. No, you, you got, got customers try, coming yeah. in and going out. Definitely. And service work being done. And that's got to be tough when you got service work going on oh, yeah. and you're trying to prep for this. Oh, it's definitely because you know, cows at seven days a week, 24 <laughs> hours a day. But uh, they're funny that way, aren't they? <laughs> definitely. <laughs> but then you got today's Tuesday. Yeah. Then we're going to have pretty much all of tomorrow and maybe a little bit of Thursday trying to get back to normal. So Right. Basically, it's, so it's a solid to a week. week. Solid week. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, Wayne, it's, well, great, it. it's great having you on the camera again yeah. and uh, opening Same up the doors it. to Hometown Cable. And, yeah, I mean, this is a, a yearly event. And, uh, you know, Calvin started the, uh, today he put the 91 show on, I think is what you said. Oh. Yeah. And, uh I, I want to go watch that to see what it was like. And here we are now, you know, 27 years later uh, to see the difference, you know. And, and there will be people in that show in 91 who are no longer with us. Oh, definitely. And, uh, and that's where the, uh, the beauty of hometown cable is because, oh, and I've said this over and over again, you capture history of the North Country. And what you have done is you can't even put a dollar amount. It's invaluable. But with that being said, Calvin needs people to support him. And uh, a donation can be sent to 1477 Ridge Road in Champlain, New York, 12919. And you can go to hometowncablenetwork.com and go through the PayPal, PayPal account. But I know there's, everybody in the North Country knows who Hometown Cable is. And there's many people who do support, and Calvin's very supportive of that and, and appreciates that. And there's many of you who want to support, and life gets in the way. Let's be realistic. You want to do it, you think about it, and this comes up and that comes up. But if you're watching this show and you want to contribute to Hometown Cable, this is a perfect time to do it because Calvin has captured the North Country for 35 years, ready to start his 36th year. And uh, I know he would appreciate it because he doesn't get any federal funds, state funds. He's got to pay for the access to the cable channel. 
he has his expenses, he has his gas, his time, um, and you know, I mean, yes, he does this, but he has to make a living at it too, and it's viewer supported and business supported. So I'm just making an appeal to you to reach out to Hometown Cable and show your appreciation for shows like this. Hang on, guys. So Calvin, we were talking to Wayne, we're talking about the generations of the Dragoons, and it started, of course, with uh, Wayne's grandfather and his dad, and there's Wayne and Gary, and then uh, you have um, Dan, and that's the fourth generation, but then we talked about the fifth generation, and oh, right here, buddy, right here, and I think we were returning, we were talking about the fifth generation, I think these are the two young uh, men we're talking about, so what's your name? Cole. Cole? Cole what? What's your last name? Dragon. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, and what's your name? Cameron. Cameron? And, and what's your last name? Cameron Booten Lafon. Oh, well. And, and you guys are, are you related? No. No? Yeah. Friends? Mm -hmm. You're yes. good friends? Okay, so you're a support group for each other, right? You have fun? Do you play a lot? Now, let me ask you this. Do you like coming into this this building and seeing all these big tractors and stuff? Yes. Okay, now have you ever played with tractors before? Yes, yes. Okay, little tractors or big tractors? Yes, little ones. Little ones. Have you ever ridden in a big tractor? No. Not yet? Have you ridden a big tractor? Yes. Oh, you have ridden a big tractor. Okay, and who have you been in a big tractor with? Would it be your dad or your grandpa? Grandpa. Grandpa, okay. And who, have you been on the tractor with him? Dad. With Dad? Nice. So, so you have fun in the fields? Is that a lot of fun? Now, I'm going to tell you a little secret here, okay? Your dad and your grandpa and your great-grandpa and your great-great-grandpa did the same thing that you guys did. They got on tractors and they played in the fields and you're like the next group. Is that cool or what? Yeah. Do you like being on the camera? Say, wait, look at the camera. Say, hi, Mr. Castine. Hi, Mr. Castine. Mm -hmm. Say, thank you for filming us. Thank you. All right. So there you are, the fifth generation of the Dragoon family. Coming. And look, how, look at these young boys. Look at that nice hairdos. I mean, these are sharp-looking young men right here. And they've had enough of that. <laughs> Cal and Joy, this is hi, Rick Hangasser. I think I've met you before. Rick, Rick. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Get out of the room here. Okay. Oh, yeah. it's the 50th anniversary. Oh, I, I thought you were going to have to make, make America great again. That's what I was telling him. We're on. We're on. Okay. Oh, we're on. Okay. All right. All right. I'm not sure what you got there with this. We got it all. Oh, you, oh that's wonderful. Okay. So th tell the folks who you are. Okay. I'm Rick Hangasser. I work with Case IH. Okay. And uh, happy to be here at Dragoon's Open House today. And how many years have you been coming here? I've been coming here since 1976. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so you've been with Case that many years. No, and, and it was International Harvester back then. But right, yes. right. Yeah. But I mean, right. yeah, but, but yep. the, the company. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. 45 years almost. Or, so retirement's not in your DNA or what? No. Not anytime soon. Are you like the owner of this company? No. 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 I'm just curious. Just yeah. curious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I'm just, I yeah. mean, I'm just wondering. Sure. The, um, so I know, Calvin, you want to talk about the GPS? Yeah. Yeah, can you kind of tell us about this is newer technology? Sure. Pre precision farming, yes. Okay, and sure. how long has that uh, technology been around? We got involved in that back in the mid-'90s. Uh, we started with combines where you could measure the yield and know exactly where the yield was in, in a particular field. And okay. then from there, um, you know, it's evolved into equipment to where, you know, it can steer machinery today. Uh, it can physically turn a machine around at the end of the field even. To, so that uh, it's made great leaps and bounds. And then wow. eventually uh, there'll be autonomous machines out there that can drive themselves without an operator in it, hopefully in our lifetime. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. So explain, like, the farmer today is in the field with your machine and it's got the GPS. Exactly how does he benefit with that GPS out in the field? So what will happen today is if you're, if you're steering the machine, it's, it's, it's very difficult to be exactly in align with it. Right. So what the equipment, what the steering will do, the guidance will allow you to either set a line that's either straight or follows the contour of the field. Okay. And then it'll repeat that time after time after time. So we're now, you may overlap six or eight or 10 inches 
to compensate for the machine wandering through the field so you don't skip anything, that okay. would, will hold much better because it's, it's following either a perfectly straight line or it's following whatever line you set time after time on a repeatable basis. So is the operator looking at a screen and, it, and it's kind of like there's a line and he's trying to keep it on that line or is it like on autopilot? It's on autopilot. It's on autopilot. Yeah. I mean, it, it can give you a guidance line to, to tell you where to go, but most of them today, the tractors, the larger ones are all standard where it's ready to steer itself. So they're just there inside to make sure if anything goes haywire, they're Con there to control, control it. the machine. Yep. So when it, so they're going down the line, it's automatic pilot. Yep. Now, do they take control of it to turn it around to come back? Most people do today, the, but we have the capability, once the field is set up and they know where the end of the field is, that the machine can physically turn itself around, hands off. So on the field, is there any pre-loading of anything into the GPS? or yeah. just You have to tell it. You you have have to, okay. It has to know where the boundaries are. Okay, and you so have they, they got to punch that in. Right, they have to know that. So okay. they, they set lines up. They know where the, the borders are in the field to start with, and then okay. that's, that's what they do. And so the way it is now, the GPS, is that new to this year? Has it evolved since last year, or has it been like this for a few years? It, it's constantly evolving. Okay. So the, 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 the turn, the end, of, the end of the row turning is the latest in the, in the technology uh, you know, on wow. that. So with 45 years, I mean, you've just seen it. It's like night and day evolution then from the machines back then to now? To now, yes. Yeah, it's, yep. it's got, I mean, it's, it's incredible. Yep, it is. It's, it's exciting, and there's more coming. Like so the autonomous, you know, vehicles, that's, you know, that's the next, the next level, and uh, that's very exciting because, you know, labor is so difficult to come by, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, if, if you can make, make somebody more efficient and, you know, reduce their labor inputs onto it and, and, and be very safe about it, and be able to operate you know, longer days and, sure. and not have the fatigue factor. There's you know, a lot of exciting things coming. Now, I know you said you, we hopefully see it in our lifetime. How far do you figure we're away from this? I don't know. We don't know. But it's being worked on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's you know, the autonomous, you know, there's autonomous vehicles out there on the road right. today. This, this is strictly off-road. Mm -hmm. so, right. Uh, but that, which makes it a lot easier because you, yes. you've got, but there's some, there's some great videos on caseih.com about, that for somebody that's interested, they showed it at the uh, farm show in 2017. So it's it's uh, or 2016. I'm sorry, 2016. So there's a lot of uh, there's you know there's a lot of buzz about it and you know a lot of anticipation on how long it'll be before okay. it'll be commercially viable. Now is this industry wide or are you guys the leader in this? Everybody's working on it. I'm I'm, I'm sure we were the first to to show it. Okay. But, uh, it's. It's uh, well, yeah. It's something if you that, show, yeah. other people jump on. The oh yeah, board, it's, you know. it's a very competitive business, which is I'm great sure for the is. great for our customers. Right. Yep. Now, of course, you, as many years into this, you've seen the evolution of the small town farmer going to more to like the Walmart farmers out there. They just get bigger and bigger. Um, so, is it you're selling more to the bigger farms, obviously, than the smaller farms? I'm assuming. Not exactly. I mean, there's. I mean, most most farms are still family farms. Oh really? And, and okay. uh, you know, in this part of the to the world and uh, you know we we may see large you know large operations very uh, you know substantial and then we we see somebody that maybe drives a milk truck or drives a fuel truck during the day and he's got you know a few head of beef and they come pick up you know a small amount of milk you know or, or raise heifers so so you do have a lot of hobby farms out there then well they're 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 well, income they producing okay they are okay and then there's hobby farms you know also right. that that uh, but there's you know, there's a, there's a fairly broad mix. There's, you know, the nice thing about farming, there's no one exact way that you have to do it to be successful. You know, a sure. lot of different people can do things different ways and, and do very well at it. And I think it's very safe to say there'll always be farming. People got to eat. You got to yep. eat, right? People so, got to eat. That's, so that's what they told a, me when not, I started. It's not a bad yep. industry. Oh, no. I know. You know. Now, maybe you may have a, a smaller group that you're selling to, but they still got to take care of the fields. That's exactly right. And, so, the, and the land hasn't shrunk. There's still the, you no, still got the land out there. That there's still, that, right. The number, the amount of land is, is there, and it's much more productive. You know, what sure. was a good yield 20 years ago is not maybe ex, as, a, as good today. And you know, they keep improving, you know, much, you know, more uh, efficient in you know the seed and the fertilizer and the ability to accurately place that seed so that you got a better chance of it, right. of it growing. 
you know, it's kind of neat, Rick, doing this interview. Even after 45 years, you still seem to have a passion for what you do. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, you got a smile on your face, yep. and, and you, you're just enjoying. And to see, hear you talk about your machines and stuff, it's, um, and where it's come, it's, it's pretty mm -hmm. impressive. Oh, yes. Yep. Exactly. It's what's, what was, uh, you know, a big deal years ago. You know, now there's, you know, there's new technology and there's efficiencies, you know, coming into the business. So it's, it's. Like I said, it's, it's, it's a great time to be in, in ag. So where's home for you? I live in western New York near Buffalo. Okay, so that wasn't too bad getting here. No. Nope. Six-hour drive probably. Seven. Seven-hour yep. drive, yeah. No. Not too bad. So yep. you have to fly in here then no. at least. Oh, no. No. No, that's great. Yep. Yeah, beautiful weather. Oh, yeah. It's been gorgeous <laughs> out. We're fortunate. The, uh, well, thank you for coming okay. on camera and, and really giving us an insight on what the GPS was all about. Very good. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Take care. Thanks. Calvin, one thing when, you, when we do these open houses, and I know it's through the years I've seen them when Bob Ben did them and, and Gordy, the one thing that the Dragoons always talk about is the value of an employee and how much they appreciate them. And, and Jennifer, uh, Wayne's sister, put this together over 400, well, there's 430 years of experience working here. And that says something about the Dragoon family to have employees here for this long they're doing something right. And uh, so you look, I mean, I don't want to read every single name here, but you, you got Chris Boris, all the way to Carl LaValle, and we just keep working our way down. And I was talking about Jennifer. It's Jennifer Cowan is her married name. And you keep going through here. Jeff Menard will be 25 years next year. You're going to have Colin Wall 25 years next year. Uh, Lee Barkham, the non-pharmacist we met earlier, 25 years. Randy Jarvis, uh, Raymond, then you got Wayne, and of course, the patriarch himself, Jack himself here. But uh, with that type of experience in any business, I mean, how can you go wrong? I mean, you're gonna get great service, quality products, and to be in business for 65 years, that doesn't happen by luck or by chance. It's because of a lot of hard work and dedication from everybody involved, and uh, the Dragoon family, they do it right. There's no doubt about it. And Calvin's just going around, kind of showing the case product. Um, of course, we talked to the Rick a little bit earlier about the GPS system. And uh, we're going to probably go in the office part and see if we can track down uh, Jack or maybe uh, track down uh, Gary if we can find him. Looks like they're at camp here. Yeah, we're in Wayne's office right now, and Calvin is taking some pictures of the uh, Dragoon family. And uh, like I said earlier, 65 years of uh, business here, and and now five generations when you look at Wayne's grandson. And uh, so here's the family picture here. So it looks four grandchildren, Wayne? Is that what I'm looking at? Five, five. Five, five, five. Where am I? Oh, there you are. Geez, yeah, five grandchildren. Well, you know, math wasn't my best at Northeastern, as you remember that. So anybody's ever bought okay. a house from no so yeah. Alexis? That's Alexis, Logan, Layla, Evan, and you got the head of Cole, which you get a better picture. And there's Cole there. And of course, we interviewed Cole just a little bit earlier. Yeah, he was not bashful in that camera. No, he had his buddy with him, and. Um, he said he's been in farm trucks and, and <laughs> tractors. Oh, and... yeah. He's, he's been in all. He's not shy of equipment, for sure. No, not at all. Maybe he can get his Aunt Jennifer to get on the camera. Well, we've Maybe been trying can... to work that. How are you making out? She, well, she's playing the shy card right now. Right. Oh, yeah. She'll be playing that oh, no, pretty no. steadily. Uh oh, they're calling you. Somebody Business. Somebody wants to buy a tractor business, from you. Business. Somebody wants to buy a tractor. Oh. <laughs> I guess we'll have to let our interview get short then. Well, we've made it into the uh, the office of the second generation of the Dragoons, Jack Dragoon. And Jack, your 65th anniversary here of Dragoons Farm Equipment in the North Country. That is right. And I got some, just to show you what it is, I got some fence to for one for each one of you. That's nice. Get Six. that, Calvin? Right. Six. 
And I know Calvin said he's been doing well. He, 1991 yeah, was. I'm gonna show my 60th anniversary hat here. I got five years ago. That was five. Well, five years ago. And now you get a pen. Right. Now you got a pen. So uh, what, what's it gonna be like another five years, Calvin? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a secret. That, no, that's gonna be a secret. We can't. There's too much excitement building up for that. But Calvin did this show in '91 with Bob Venn. All right. And um, so 20. 90 was the first year. Your old 90 was your first year you did it. Yeah. Oh, but you put 91 back on TV Basically, today. Yeah, okay. Over the weekend. Yeah. So this is your 28th year. 28th year? No, 29th year. It's 28th your... anniversary, but the first year is like being born. Oh my God. Second cousin removed. No, no, okay. No, no, no. It's like being born. A year later, you've been there for twice. You've been there on that date twice. Well, I'm times. glad we got that straightened out. That's for I sure. That well, out. Jack, I'm still confused, but I believe Calvin on that. Okay. But the bottom line is. He's showing at this. He's been here every year that right. you've had this, and uh, in that show we were talking off camera. He was talking about back then you were talking about milk prices being so low, yeah. and it seems like it's always the issue with farmers here. And here we are, 29 years later, and I think you had an article here that you just showed us. More farms are going out because of low milk prices. Well, these farms there, they lost the, <coughs> the milk company. Told them, you know, 100 farmers there find a place for milk, or they're not taking on their products anymore that's amazing and th this is in pennsylvania but it it takes in some of new york and a couple other states but you know it's hard to believe that your machinery your labor your fuel your lights taxes has gone up skyrocket but right. yet their prices is, is the same where it was about 1976 i think so i mean i, I and, and I mean, I know nothing about this other than when I hear stories like this. With prices being so low, is it that the farmers today are so efficient with production? Is that what's driving this? Well, to make payments, the banks, I think, is the way it works. We'll give you money, but you got to make your payments. You got to add on more cows. Okay. And the big boys has got to add on more cows to keep up with the pace of everything else. Now I know when we were talking to Wayne earlier and, and going back to when he got involved, he said just in the North Country there was like 250 farms. Oh yeah. Well, there, I mentioned it before, there's four IH dealers in Clinton County. That's not counting about a couple John Deere's and right. other Mason, Hard and all. Right. But there's four IH. Plus there was one in Vermont, across the border in Albert, and one in Hemisford. And you guys were all busy. Yeah, you, you just take, you had enough to do right in your own backyard. Sure, right. And today you got to travel 50, 100 miles to, to make it work. And then you had to diversify in other parts of the business or other areas also. Oh, yeah. You know, you take your Kubota line and Cub Cadet line, and, you know, that's getting, it's grown quite a bit where we've lagged off. You know, if you lose 98 of your farmers, I would say we lost 98% at least. Since, the local I, farmers. since I took over. 98% of the local farmers. I would say so. Right, we only got about six farms in each Champlain. You got six and more. And so you have to go to different counties to well, compete. If you're gonna, that's right. And, you're, and your companies are pushing us dealers. All they think about market share, market share. Right. Of course, their, their boss telling them, you got to push, push. And, right. You know, you take in new, new stuff, the nice sell new stuff. You got to get rid of the used stuff, too. Right. Yeah. That's where your profit or money is tied up. Sure. I'm, I'm sure. The So you have less farmers that you're marketing to, right? Yeah, that's right. But the land hasn't, I mean, there's still the same amount of land that has to be worked on. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that, I'm, I'm assuming that the bigger farmer, and I call it going to the Walmart mentality, just that you have to get bigger and bigger. I assume they're getting more and more equipment to deal with all this land they have now. Right. They get more equipment, but they're getting bigger equipment where, you know, you used to have a six row, four row corn planter, two row you start in with, four sure. row, right. six row, 12 you, row, you 16 don't even, you don't row. You don't sell those anymore. I mean, you know, you get 12, 12 row is our standard okay. planter. You see probably a couple out back there. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, everything's so much bigger. Your tractors, your harrows, or, mm -hmm. and, you know, they're, they're on the ball, most of these bigger boys. They know what, right, how to do it. And 
Now, do, do the do the farmers that are still around? Do they still put a lot into the service part of it, or are they, or do they, they upgrade every few years or whatever it is the, with the, with the farm equipment? They they can't. Most of them, not some, probably some, but ninety percent or more, you can't afford. You can't afford to upgrade like they should. So they they're putting more into the service department. We do lots of service. I'm assuming that your yeah. service department is really busy. Yeah, and, and it's hard to find service people. The technicians, sure. Yeah, technician and the technician. Now, do, do this usually come here or do you do house calls too? Well, we have uh, two service trucks. Plus then we have a service truck for tires. Do We do quite a bit of business in tires. Yeah. But uh, lots of stuff. It, Technology is somewhat different from when I started and what it is today. The we were computer. talking to the case the, the case guy and he, Rick, and he said that with the GPS and stuff. Oh, that it's, is. it's incredible. Oh yes, and uh, you know nothing for eleven thousand dollars just to have a computer so you can tell what's wrong with your tractor, same as the cars today and everything. Right. You know most of the the old mechanic. Uh, they'd be lost today or. Right. The, what, there's there's no you got a. A technician versus a mechanic, there's light years away oh. from what their roles were. Right, but you take them ones away to go back to the old stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> then vice versa, okay. they'd be in trouble too. Sure. Because some of this older equipment, the younger ones. Do you still they, see a lot of the older equipment coming in still? Not like we used to, okay. but there's still a few, you know, older balers, and, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, hey, Jack. Hi there. Is uh, still has some problems, but uh, they're not used as much. So where do you see the industry going? I mean, there's always going to be farming. I mean, you you got to grow food and you got to produce food, right. so you're always going to have farming. Where do you see it growing here, or do you have any insights where you think it might be going? The way that the way it is right now, I cannot tell you honestly. Uh, something has to be done, but they've been saying that. I can remember. When I was supervisor over 30 years ago, I think it was Dave Martin, met in Plattsburgh with a bunch of farmers. And he's, back then, he said, you farmers, one wants this, one wants that, and one wants this. You gotta, for me to fight, you gotta have one program. I can fight for it. But if you can't get along on something, I can't help you. Right. And something, they gotta get together some way and get some of these legislators and uh, off their duff and you know this is this this is getting very serious sure. and uh, well it's been serious for decades that's right and, and but now it, it's almost it, to the point of no return it's getting it's getting that you're correct yeah and uh, over in Canada they have a quota some good about it some bad but I sold you know some used stuff quite a bit over in Canada because uh, they're having it pretty good. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, they, I guess they give them more quota and when you get more quota, of course, that gives them more benefit and their price, price of milk is so much higher and everything. And, right. But they make just so much and that's probably what has to, something has to be done. So, I mean, obviously, the government's involved in the oh, yeah. industry, right? Oh, yeah. They, they can very well control it because... Well, they do control it. If you it. buy your quota, you you got to buy it through the government, and they put out just so much, and that's it. So, is there anything wrong with letting the free market, the government out of it, and let the free market do its thing? I mean, what's the downside of that? I'm not really up on it that much, but... The melt price, i always been told, is controlled by Wisconsin and this and that. Well, we need something up in our own neck of the woods and take care of New York. And I mean, when you're New talking York, prices you know. of milk, I mean, you got prices now that are back in the 90s, don't you? Oh, well, I think before that, I think. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. I bet you it was closer to probably 76. Back, It goes wow. back a long time. Wow. You know, when you're talking $12, $14 melt. Sure, at the time, back and then. Back then, and, and you know, that's where you are today. Right. And a tractor that's say cost $3,000, you know, you can spend four hundred, five hundred thousand there pretty sure. easy. And I, I, I might be wrong, but I think labor's gone up too, hasn't it? Well, 
If you hire employees, you'll find very quickly. <laughs> no, I know. I, but I say that in jest. But I mean, everything goes up. Uh, right. And you take in health insurance, that's yeah. a killer. Right, for everybody. And, and you take workman comp. And it's not all gravy, you put it that way. No. And, and all you got to do is start a business yourself and you'll learn. Oh, for oh. new ones to start in today, I can't see how they can do it. Mm -hmm. Same as farming. You know, There's no way anybody can really start in. Unless they really had something, you mm -hmm. know, left behind to help sure. them out. Sure, sure. But, I mean, you have a lot of experience in this industry. I mean, well, you've been here second generation. So I think I saw on the board 65 years. Oh, yeah, I've been here since 65. Yeah, you were here when it started, right? Right there. Picture right there on the board right there. Right here, okay. So you, uh, so when you started, you were you were with your dad, obviously. When, right. when he well, started I was this. Still in high school. Right, but but you were here from, year. you were here from the beginnings. Yeah. I did work out a couple of years, two, three years. Uh huh. But I still was here during the days so, here all the time. So sixty five years and I and I'd asked uh, the case guy this, he's been doing this for like forty five years. Is retirement in the future for Jack Dragoon or you just love what you're doing and you love coming to the office every day and why not somewhere well. you go? <laughs> It is in some way, but you know, if I can be some help, I will be. If they sure, if they throw me out. Well, <laughs> we'll go that route too. <laughs> I don't see the boys. I don't see them doing that to you or your daughter. I don't see that at all. It's yeah. just obviously it's a very close knit family, and and you guys do a wonderful job here. Yeah, there's a addition to our family right there. All of them. Oh, that's that recent picture. Yeah. Okay, right on the window there, Calvin last Scott. Week. Last week. Yeah, just last week. Yeah, the, the, no, the, the, the water let loose. The and water let right loose the lake in they the summer. Right. The, they just photoshopped the, the lawn to make it look green. Yeah, that's. So I, I'm not counting, but how big's the family now? How many? Oh, I don't know. There's got to be 65, 70. There's one more. <laughs> one little dragoon is not in the picture. And then I, I've been told there might be another one coming on the right. But, what, did you, uh, what did you guys start? Look at that. That's because of you. Margaret's idea. It's Margaret's idea. Oh, Mar <laughs> you had no control. I had much. No, no. <laughs> well, you got a, a nice, wonderful family right there. Yeah. It's, uh, and I'll tell you, this is, together. this is well attended. I mean, we pull up, and I was joking you had the fire department controlling traffic. I couldn't believe the vehicles here. You're supposed to start at 10. Yeah, you were here about 9, uh, 9.30? We were here at 10, about yeah. 5 up. Probably. I think there's quite a few was here before that. I, I hear there's a record number of sausages and pancakes that we've gone through there already. Well, that's what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we've done some switching this year, too, on our sausage and that. We changed vendors. And, uh -huh. But... Uh, I guess they've been busy up there. I haven't been up there yet. I haven't tried one yet. <laughs> they said it's been real busy. <laughs> yeah, we're probably holding them up. Yeah, I know. Well, Jack, thanks for coming no, on camera again. I, I want to, you know, thank you boys for coming. and Also, uh, lots of work to get ready for this. I know. I was talking to Wayne about that. He said, by the time you're done, you have a solid week before and after. Well, pretty close. And, uh, all, okay. all our help, you know, that did it mostly. And today, you know, we got to thank all the volunteers. The, yeah. the cooks are mostly all volunteers. Yeah. And, and the servers. But anyway. Uh, well, there's a positive thing to this. You're only 51 weeks away from doing it again. Well, I don't know. <laughs> my, my feeling might be a little different coming. Later on, there's a day where you have something outside. Mm. Where we a haven't got, where we haven't got to do so much inside, you know. Right. We had the snow against us. The guys yesterday were out shoveling snow off from the roof, so it wouldn't drip down and everything. Wow. And all the machinery out front and sure. everything. And you know that's yeah a lot to it where people think you just go in there and not that ain't the way it works. No, it doesn't work that way at all. And fortunately, got good help with that. You yeah. know, but it's that a lot does of preparation. It. And and that's telling Wayne. While you're doing this, you're still getting your work done. You still got a job to do. You're still got customers coming. Still in. Got, you got to service right. them. 
you know, probably put them off a little bit more, <laughs> but try to anyway. Yeah. But there's, right. there's but a they're lot. understanding. And uh, but uh, it takes a lot of work to get ready and. Well, it's well attended, so that's for sure. So it's not for. Uh, well, it's not between, any work in vain, that's for sure. Between your advertising with Calvin and your uh, inviting them up here for me and everything is yeah. much well. much appreciated and everything. And we got quite a few good company reps too. Yeah. Try our popcorn too. <laughs> we got a popcorn rep here, do you? No, we got a guy. I, I trained a guy up there. How to cook popcorn? One, oh, wow. yeah, a guy. Gee, it took us four hours to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> Hadn't touched it since last year? <laughs> no, that son of a gun to clean. Get that grease on it and everything. But we do have popcorn during the, anybody wants it. Nice. Well, Calvin, we got to let this man get back to work. He's running a business oh, here. He's working very hard. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, not according to the boys. Like yeah. you're like that. You just crack the whip uh, all the time. Yeah. I'm a follower now. <laughs> we let the we let the younger generation yeah. take it's over. It's their turn, right? It's their turn. That's right. And I and I saw the uh, the fifth generation. We interviewed the fifth generation of the Dragoon family. A little Dan's follower boy? there. Dan's boy. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, he's gonna be quite a little corker. Yeah. <laughs> we had half of his zip and go. But there was a day we used to. Yeah. Those days are gone. Oh, I don't know. Today, the younger ones today, uh, <laughs> I think there are lots. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got some cupcakes there donated. Happy birthday there. Is today your birthday? No, Friday. Coming up, or last Friday? This coming Friday. This Friday. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you. And My God, 55 and holding, huh? Yeah. <laughs> got to add a few. A few fives. A few fives. <laughs> Anyway, uh, she brought in for the boys there three trays of uh, cinnamon rolls there yesterday to show the preacher. She's you know fantastic nice. for that. A few other ground tell every once in a while. Nice. Bring. So they, I, they so that just forwarded for you, or you? Oh, no, they're more sure special. They, they don't go. Nobody out touches there. those. You get them out in the shop. That won't last a minute. <laughs> And of course, I need it. Well, absolutely. <laughs> it's your, it is your birthday. That's right. <laughs> it is right. <laughs> well, Jack, again, thank you for coming on the Very camera. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, so we're where the real action is going here, where the customers are coming through, but they have a lot of vendors here, and we have a Holland vendor, right? Yep. Okay, and you're here to promote the uh, the grills. Yes. Uh, so in your name? My name's Jerry. Jerry, and where are you from, Jerry? I live down in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Okay, so you must have came up yesterday? Yes. So you had to, they, were these already here, you had to bring this up yourself? Yeah, Jack here at Dragoon supplies all the grills. They sell them year-round. We just come to do a special demonstration. Okay. Uh, show off the grills, cook some food, and hand out samples. So I did have a sample of, um, of your piece of meat there. Yes, okay. meatloaf. What is it? It's meatloaf, Buckeye Meat meatloaf. Okay, so Buckeye meatloaf, okay. And it was pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay, so that Buckeye meatloaf... You cooked on one of these grills. We did, yep. We got a pinnacle grill going outside. And uh, the Holland Grill is the only grill guaranteed never to flare up. So you can just drop it right on the grate. Yep. No foil, no pan. And the way the grill works, it cooks all the fat out of the meat and turns it into flavor that flavors your food. So is that just natural flavor on that? That is just natural. The only addition is... Carolina seasoning. It's a Holland Grill exclusive mix. Okay. It's a sweet barbecue flavor. Right. Um, it's good on just about anything. That is what we use in the meatloaf. So when somebody buys one of these grills, do they get like a, um, a book that shows you how long you should cook these, this type of meat and stuff? There is. In the owner's manual, there's a little cheat sheet that gives you times and temperatures. There's a lot of recipes available online. Uh, there is actually a, a cookbook you can purchase. Uh, they don't have any out in stock right now, but there's a cookbook that you can purchase that has a lot of recipes on it. And it does, Holland Grill works differently than anything else. You don't use the thermometer on your lid. You go by internal temperature. Okay. And uh, you basically just turn the grill on and it's either on or off. So you don't have to guess with high, medium, low. You just turn it on. That's it? That's it. And the so, grill so runs So how does it not burn the meat? It, it works like a reverse rotisserie. Instead of having to move your food in a, around to keep it from burning, the air circulates around your food. 
and it actually locks in all the natural juices right right away, so the food can't dry out. Okay, so that now what? How many pounds of meat was that? That is, uh, it's about two pounds of meat, and there's a few veggies thrown in. Okay, and then how long did it take to? So you just turned it on, put it on, and how long is a two pound? That meat? takes about 45 minutes. Now, on a day like today, uh, you know, where it's pretty cool out there. Um, could take a few minutes longer, but usually it's about 40 minutes. Okay, so let's say it's a typical Sunday afternoon barbecue grill. You throw some burgers and hot dogs on there. You turn it on, shut it down. How long? It depends on how thick you make them. Uh, you don't want to put frozen food on there because that'll take forever. This grill doesn't get up to eight, 900 degrees like a regular grill would. Okay. Uh, it usually takes about eight, 10 minutes a side. A side? Uh, for, for burgers. Okay. You know, if, they're, if they're a good thick burger, the meatloaf, we don't have to flip it again because the air moves around your food. You don't have to flip a whole turkey or so meatloaf. So how is that any different for the hamburger then? Well, the hamburger, because it's a lot smaller it and you want to put color on each side, like marks okay. on each yep. side, you would flip that. You wouldn't have to. I see. Okay. But it, it it's what... Better presentation. Yeah. Okay. So about eight to ten minutes for a hamburger. Yeah. Each side. Yes. So in about 20 minutes, you got some really nice, good hamburgers. Yep. And how about the hot dogs? Hot dogs are going to take maybe five to eight minutes. Um, but you don't have to flip those. You, or what, move them. you you can flip them for color to get evenly brown because the bottom's going to be a little bit sure, hotter. Sure. Um, but they will. You can actually fill that whole tray up with hot dogs, and it's going to pretty much get done at the same time. At the same time. Okay. And they're not burnt unless you want them that way. And obviously the same thing with fish. Yep. And how long is a, a thing of fish? Whether it's um, grouper, bass. Um, it, a few pounds probably would take you about 20, 30 minutes. Okay, uh, same thing, you put it on tinfoil, then you flip it over? You, you could put it on tinfoil or a cedar plank. The okay. reason being that because when the fish gets done, it starts to flake. Yeah. And if, if you, you wouldn't want to put a, a bear fillet on there. If you had a salmon with a skin on, you could drop that on there. Yep. Because it, it won't, you know, the skin might sure. stick to the grate. Right. But uh, it'll make it easier to get it off okay. if you have foil or a pan on there. Now, is it hard to clean? It's not. That <coughs> that uh, stainless steel diamond pattern grate, <coughs> it, it lifts right off. Okay. You can see here. Okay. This can be brushed. It can go in the dishwasher. It's high quality. It's not going to bend. It, it also has a lifetime warranty on it. Okay. This and the cast iron burner, Holland Grill gives you a lifetime warranty on it. Um, and our grills, when I say lifetime, I don't just mean two or three years. It's something that will easily last you for 15, 20 years. Really? With no problem. So you have, I assume, different lines or different size grills? There are. There's three different sizes. All the ones you see here to the right and left are the same size. There's, that's the normal okay. full-size grill. There is a companion traveling <coughs> model right there, which is about half of this size here. And then what we're cooking on outside is the pinnacle, which is extra large, and it's about two of these grates okay. big. So it's almost twice the size of a right. regular grill. And those are the three sizes. They have all of these have one burner. They have inside the same parts. So whether you're getting the uh, one of the higher models like this cabinet base here, or you're getting the Liberty entry level, the same parts, same. They're so the same size. So what makes it different? The, the higher price points. Th this one has a cabinet base on it. Okay. So you have storage under there. <coughs> Your tank is fully concealed. Here it's exposed. It's okay. It doesn't have a thermometer on the lid. Okay. But inside it's the same. Same lifetime warranty on the burner and the grate. The same drip pan system inside that gives you the no flare up guarantee. Okay. And they're all made in America. All right, and that, which is obviously people are looking for that. Yes. Now, the Holland is known for the smokestack. Yep. Can you kind of talk about that? I can. I can pull one down here so you can see. This, uh, the smokestacks here, Brad Holland's, the, his guy who came up with Holland Grill, they're his original design. Okay. And they give it the signature look, but they're also functional. They, they keep that convection current going and circling around your food, so right. that's like a chimney effect. And they also keep the grill from getting too hot inside. Okay. And Holland Grill's made to operate at a much lower temperature than a conventional barbecue grill. Okay. And the reason for that is, one, it helps with the no flare up guarantee so your food isn't getting overcooked, it's not getting dried out. Right. But it also means you can cook a pretty much endless menu of food. You can cook pizza on here, you can cook a whole turkey, you can cook bread, you can do casseroles if the power goes out and you want to do something like that, or baked beans with some added smoke flavor, drop it on here. 
uh, meatloaf as you saw. You could do cookies, pie. So, okay, so Calvin, if you can get the down here, okay. So it's as simple as you start it. Yep. When you go on to or off to on, you put it here. Yep. And you walk away. Make sure there's no tank there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and then you and you just walk and then you That's just it. walk away. You close that lid. You close the lid, and so if you got a met or a, a, a what do you call it, a recipe book mm -hmm. that says that needs to be there for 12 minutes on the Holland Grill, you just set your timer, walk away from it, come back 12 minutes later, and it's done. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. You, you give it, depending on the temperature outside, you give this maybe 10 to 15 minutes to warm up to, to warm full up temperature, okay, yep. which is going to be about 400, 425 is ideal. Okay. So once it hits that temperature, you're good to cook. You literally, if I wanted to do a whole 20 pound turkey, yep. I'd open the lid three times. Once to light it, Yep. let it warm up, come back out, put that turkey on, stick a temperature probe in it. Close that lid, walk away. When the probe beeps, come out and check it. That's that's really? as simple as it gets. No basting, no flipping, no moving. In fact, the more you open this lid, the longer it takes and the trickier it gets. It just so so literally, it you start it, you see it gets to like 425, you're ready to cook. Yep. Now in the summertime, hot summer day, how long does it take to get the temperature? It's not going to take long at all, especially the, the powder coat aluminum model like this. If you have it out in the sun, it's already going to be over 100 degrees in there and you might get there in five minutes. Wow. It, it does, it won't take long. Um, That's impressive. In the summertime, yeah. It's just as literally putting your propane tank, starting it, and you're ready to roll. That's it. That's it. That's it. You, you <laughs> take it home and, uh, you know, we're a couple days before Easter here. You take one of these models home, you got the ham, you're ready to go for Easter dinner. I mean, and it will be the best ham you've yeah, cooked. It, it it's keeps not going to dry the, it out. The, right. right. All, yeah. all the moisture in the the uh, taste stays in there. Right. And it gives an amazing taste. The, the smoke coming off from the drippings as it hits the, the drip pan in there gives you a very unique flavor you won't get off a regular grill. Certainly not an oven. So any, any grease, whatever, drops into this pan here and yes. goes to a cup or something? There's, there's a bucket on the other side of that drip pipe down there. It's a nice, uh, probably a quart and a half size bucket. Yeah. So it's not going to overflow on you. And uh, at the end of that drip pipe is also a, a shutoff valve. You can use that drip pan down there. You can use that drip pan as a steam pan. So if you want to do low and slow cooking, right. ribs or uh, pork shoulder, or steam seafood, steam fish, veggies, that's what you do. And it holds about a, a gallon of liquid. So you could use apple juice if you want to do uh, right. ribs and flavor them with apple right. juice or cider, or just plain water and anything like that. It's an, it's an added feature. Sure. Now, obviously, people will be seeing this after the open house. So dragoons carry this all year long. They do. They've got them here year round. Uh, Jack's been selling them for many, many years. Right. <laughs> now I see. Are these just show specials, or would this be? They do have some show specials. They're about uh, hundred dollars, hundred twenty some dollars off for today. So is that, is that the price there? That's a show special, or is it even off that? I believe that is a show special. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they, that, that they, they start at the retail, normal retail is $7.89, yep. and that gets you the lifetime warranty on the burner and the grate, and uh, you get, the, of course, the no flare-up guarantee that all sure. Hollands have, and the, this model here, the this, this entry level, is, has a three-year warranty on the body of the grill. It ranges up to 15 years for the, the stainless models. Yep. Okay. And what is your biggest seller model? The biggest seller is probably uh, these two right here. Okay. You have the uh, Freedom Grill here and yep. then the Epic if you want a little step up with a cabinet. Okay. And it's probably more because of the cabinet, Yeah. I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Well, that was quite a, uh, a lesson on Holland Grills. You did a very nice job. Well, thank you. It's good to see you guys out here again this oh, year. Oh, my God. This is great. I mean, people watching this... I mean, just that you can literally put it in and forget about it. You know, you aren't sitting there and right. getting burning your eyebrows and stuff while you're trying to flip the food and this. Right. You don't have to mess with it unless you want to. Uh, you want that to be your so little it, thing. So, so if a person's putting a piece of meat on, it's 15 minutes. They can go have a beverage while they're waiting and yeah. not get burnt. That's right. En <laughs> enjoy your beer instead of pouring it on the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right, it's good seeing you. All guys right, here. take care. Not once. He alluded to it, but he didn't say it. If you're looking, you're not cooking. That's your model. If you're looking, that, you ain't cooking. You that's right. No, that's impressive. That's really impressive.
we're slowly making our way. We're gonna we get some people we're gonna talk to that we had to pass by because they're so busy. But we did want to show this uh, this in here. All the uh, people lined up. This is about to 12, 15, 12, 10 or so. There's Margaret Dragoon, the, the boss of the outfit. And there comes Jack. Jack's finally got himself a plate of food. He's <laughs> he's, uh, he's uh, buying a meal for everybody here today. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Bob, Ben, and I first came here in 1990. <laughs> and uh, after 97, when uh, Bob passed away, uh, after that, uh, Gordy came with me for most of the time until he passed away. Not every year, but most of the years he was able to get here. Gordy a little, and then Joey has picked up a few times. Uh, over the years, and I've been here a few times uh, on my own, so we'll, we'll continue. This is our. Yeah, although it was uh, 27 years ago, it's our 28th visit here. Actually, it's our, it was 28 years ago, it's our 29th visit because we started in 1990. So a lot has changed during that. Uh, quarter century plus and uh, one thing that hasn't changed is the people in the area appreciate uh, the folks here at Dragoon's Farm Equipment and this is Customer Appreciation Day so as you can see they've got a whole lot of those in the North Country. This is Gary Dragoon, uh, Dragoon's Farm Equipment. Uh, our open house is today is our 65th anniversary and celebrating today, I've got two workers here that uh, I've got one that has 25 years of experience with us, and we have another one that had 30 years this year. So it's not too often today's business that you can have employees stay with you that long. And we've also got other ones, and my brother's Wayne's end that have uh, 25 and 30 years also. So uh, uh, we're pretty proud of that. Um, we've always tried to treat our our employees right and I think it shows by them being here for this amount of years so uh, on behalf of Dragoon's Farm Equipment uh, I've got a, a clock for 25 years of service to Randy Jarvis and a little gift certificate there for him and his wife and I've also got another envelope for John for 30 years of experience with John Glyke from Vermont uh, he's been with us for 30 years so uh, well, between the two, you're talking 55 years of experience, so that uh, goes a long ways today in the, in the uh, repair end of it. Uh, we're proud to have them, and uh, we hope they'll be here another 10, 15 years. So I uh, really appreciate it, and uh, I don't know if they either want to have something they want to say. Uh, this will be the first time Randy's ever been short of words. <laughs> but uh, thank you very much, and uh, really appreciate it. Look at the microphone over here. We'll keep on rolling here. Here we go. We'll keep on rolling as these guys get back. Get back to work here. <laughs> Party's over. <laughs> well, let's see. I'm going to make my way through here. Let's see. 30 years ago. Let's see. That'd be what? 1988. 88. 88. So he he just missed it. If he'd uh, started in. 86, he would have to pay a toll to come to work every day in that bridge in Rouse's Point. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah, he comes all the way from Isle of Mont, so it's, it's quite a haul for him every day to come here. And He's here bright and early, and he's a lot of times one of the last ones to leave, so we're, we're pretty fortunate to have him, both of them, really. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Gary Dragoon, you, you were so busy, you, uh, you missed Joey Trombley. Joey had yeah, to I see get back here. to his day job here at yep. Cavanaugh Realty. We appreciate he probably Joey. sold a couple homes while he was here. Yeah, that's what he was aiming to do, yeah. So let me hold my microphone cord here while the camera keeps rolling there. We, this is hometown cable. We, nothing fancy here. <laughs> but you get the job done. <laughs> that's the main thing. You, you know, get the job done. Yeah, you're admiring my hat, aren't you there? Yeah, it's pretty yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, 60th one. 60th. That's a collector's item. Now. Yep. 
Put oh. that on eBay. <laughs> That's where I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Gup Cadet. Uh, I think you told me last year how long you've been in the lawn and garden end of it. I'll, you recall roughly what years you guys got involved with the lawn and garden and realized that selling farm tractors wasn't going to well, pay all the bills? Uh, involved, my, my dad started with the lawn and garden end because uh, this was, uh, I think, cadets. Cup Cadets been in it 55 years, so we've been in it the whole time. We're one of the few that started with Cadet and still have Cadets. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've been, they were 30 years. I, this would be my 40th year, so <laughs> I've been here quite a bit too. Of course, yeah, you, I saw you and Wayne in. were 39 on the list. So yeah. Made up. But we had probably eight years before that where <laughs> yeah. we had to come after didn't, school. Didn't count. <laughs> didn't count. <laughs> no, so. Uh, yeah, we've been uh, pretty fortunate. I mean, the uh, price of milk the way it is now, it's, I don't know how these guys do it. So. No, they're not. That's a problem. Yeah, they're yeah. not doing it. It's, it's tough. So you got to diversify. And so we got into the compacts and the utility vehicles. That's a big part of our business now. So just to, you know, just keep adding something to keep us going. So like I say, it's, it's tough to be a business no matter what you're in today. Now, Cub Cadet, now, is that originally part of the... Uh, International Harvester? Yes, it was, yep. I know Farmall had the Cub Tractor for many Cub years. Cub Tractor. I would assume this is where they got the, the name from. Yeah, that's where they got the Cub Cadet from, yeah. That was uh, the original one. I mean, we still have some of the original ones, and they're still going today. So they they were built tough back then, and uh, they're still built pretty pretty good quality today, too. So, yeah, we're, we're lucky we have them as uh, one, of our, uh, one of our brands. But they are the independent now from Case IH? In, yes, in, yeah, back in, in uh, they made them for uh, IH from 80 to 85, and then in 85, MTD uh, replaced it uh, by themselves. Uh, MTD made them for, cup, uh, for, uh, for, cup, for, for IH uh, from 80 to 85, and then in 85, they took over. So they're an entirely different company? Entirely different company, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a privately owned company, MTD, family owned. Yep. Is it American? American made. American yeah. made. Yep. Right. That's, uh, that's important to some of There's us. Very few things today. <laughs> Maybe Trump will get that change around. We'll see. I don't want to get into too much politics. No, no, especially when you're selling Kubota, right? In the Kubota. <laughs> exactly. Now, some of these might be made in America, but it's not They're an assembled company. in America, yep. yep. Only the bigger ones uh, come uh, overseas. Most of the Kubota stuff now is being made right here in the States. That's Put what they're together. trying to do. Yeah. Good. They have big plants in Atlanta, and they're, they just put another big operation in in Texas. So they're really trying to have everything done over here in the states. Now uh, this is a, a Kubota. It's got the loader and the backhoe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You can handle it all here. Can you put a mower underneath? Put too? a mower deck on. You can put a front mount of snowblower. We sell an awful lot of the BX models. Great, uh, great machine for around the house and stuff. Um, <laughs> easy to operate uh, we did very well with them uh, would you say every homeowner should have one of these everyone right? yes yeah, yes I would, definitely I would think so yeah yep. if not the bigger model at least the, <laughs> at least the smaller <laughs> one yep <laughs> now uh it's a i'd call it a reddish orange what color would you is there a color orange orange orange, <laughs> orange. yeah kubota orange no. do they come in green no 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 just orange just orange. You don't sell much stuff that comes in green, do you? No. I think no. I saw maybe some. Uh, a few used ones. <laughs> yeah, would take some a few. Farm implements in the back that might be green. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, this here, who would buy one of these typically? Um, you got a lot of hobby farmers still. A lot of uh, people with horses, um, vegetable people, uh, a lot of guys just for going in the woods for their food plots and their hunting camps and stuff and um, you know up here in North Country you don't know what you're gonna get for snow so a lot of them buy them just just for snow removal in the winter time. I imagine you can move some snow with something this size. Oh yeah yep yeah four-wheel drive uh, sell a lot of them with snow blowers but a lot of them with the loaders too so. Can you put a cab on them? You can put cabs on them and then we also have ones that have the factory cab which have heat and air conditioning on them. Oh, that's too fancy. Uh, <laughs> but it's nice in the wintertime when it's 20 below. Well, I imagine most of the uh, the big tractors have uh, yeah, all, heat and air conditioning. Yeah, all yeah. the big ones are standard with that today. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and we talked to the 
the, the Case IH guy there, and I uh, wanted to make sure Joey brought up the GPS, and it's just amazing yeah. what, the, what those, that piece of equipment can oh, do now. Oh, they can just, be within inches today. Well, if you take somebody spraying or something, as expensive as spray is, you don't want to be overlapping too much where it really adds up when you start doing thousands of acres. It really, really uh, can add up in a hurry. Yeah, we're getting some uh, huge fields in our northern tier oh, now. Oh, some very big fields. Yep. Yeah. Okay, and of course you've got the, the trimmers and... Uh, yep, trimmers, little blowers, handheld blowers, hedge trimmers, weed whackers. Now, I've never really... I don't want to talk bad about a, a product, but I've never quite understood the advantage. I can see if you've got something on your porch you want to blow it off, but... I've also seen people blowing their leaves onto their neighbors. <laughs> yeah, that too. But uh, I'll tell you what's nice with the blowers, and we use it a lot, is after we wash a piece of equipment, you take the blower and you get all the water off it yeah, and stuff. Blow it dry. That, that works real well. And just in their back, we get so much sand and stuff to mm -hmm. get the sand away from the building and stuff. So blow it off the driveway. There, there's, there's some uses for it, so they are pretty handy. Is that big, long thing here? Is that a blower? What is that? That's a blower and a vacuum, so you can get the leaves out of your shrubs and stuff and it'll shred them up and put them in a bag which isn't on there right now but then you can take the long spout off and use it as a regular blower. Okay. I bought one of your trimmers there last fall and... The, the and your wife likes it? <laughs> well, I, I found a lot of things to start trimming so she may, maybe by the time I'm done she might not like it so I... <laughs> it's very handy to... Cut little, uh, you know, one-inch trees, little brush and stuff. <laughs> so, but I gotta ask permission before I trim anything. There you go. You don't want to get in trouble. Yep. Okay, and you got generators, of course. Uh, generators, salamanders, the heaters, uh, kerosene heaters. We sold quite a few this winter with it being so cold. Uh, we got little compressors, little talking, log splitters, pressure okay, washers. You think kerosene heaters that? You're not talking salamanders? Salamanders, yes. Oh, yep. yeah, that's what you're talking yep. about? Yep. Oh, those you got to know what you're doing with, though, because... Uh, Be very careful, that's for sure. They get pretty hot. Yeah, they can, uh, they can get warm very quickly, but yep. uh, with the frozen pipes and stuff... Uh, exactly, yep. ...comes in very handy. So what's your biggest seller back here? Um, I don't know. Kubota's hard to meet there, Mr. Parker. Yeah, he's, he's here testing the pancakes. Yep. He was just here to taste the pancakes, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, both, I mean, very good. Yep, very good. Yep, you're welcome. So what are you saying? Uh, um, utility vehicles has gotten to be a big thing. Uh, Cup Cadet has come out with a new Challenger 4x4s for uh, riding and stuff, and they've been very popular. Um, Kubota has uh, their brands too, but the the cadet ones have been been very good for us this year. You got those outside, I assume. Outside, yep, yep. A lot of guys use them for hunting, but trail riding, and a lot of them use them around the house. Some go get wood wood out of the some stove wood out and stuff. So they've been uh, been a big addition for us. All right, uh, anything new that you've Suddenly take, uh, take it on besides the popcorn machines. Popcorn machines. <laughs> <laughs> That's a case I each popcorn machine there. So. Yeah, we got dad that for uh, Christmas one year from the shop. <laughs> it's been used, that's for sure. <laughs> and it's free popcorn today. Free right? popcorn today. So, uh, yeah, uh, anything, Gary, that is new that you're, you're dealing um, with now? Or? No, not anything in particular. Um, just glad uh, you were able to do it again this year. We really appreciate it. Uh, that's for sure. We, Watching on TV last night, there are 91 one with yeah. the old edition, the new edition. New I mean, edition, yeah, brand new that year. Yep, a lot yeah. of, a lot so, of faces aren't with us anymore that we're at. That was hard to believe. I was just talking with Bob Supernall. He says, he says he, he, I don't think he actually counts them, but he says, you start counting the number of people that are gone, and it was, it was a lot. Well, you look, you know, that's, but you, you figure it's 28 years ago, 27 right. years ago now. It doesn't seem possible. Uh, but it's, been that long. Yeah, that was our second show that we did. We did the first one in 90, which was 28 years ago. And yep. then 
this is just our 29th year of doing it, but uh, 27 years from now, there'll be a few more of us that are gone. Uh, I think so. I'm, 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 sure I'm, I'm sure I won't be here. I'm, I'm not including you in there, but I'll, I'll be just about ready to turn 98 in 27 years. So well, you'll probably still be here. I should still be here. Yeah. But, yeah. A lot of other people won't be. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of new faces, which is good. <laughs> just a lot of faces in general. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, we parked a car at 10 o'clock, and there was only a couple places left yeah, to park. They, at that they started about 9.30, quarter 10 coming in, and it's been pretty steady since. So I figured you had a rock concert going on or something. <laughs> yeah, I was singing. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> get here early and listen to Gary Dragoon sing. Mr. Lombard. Yeah, that was good as, good good as French. Yeah, his French, French style hunting cap there. Yep. He's ready to go. Veronica's catching up with him now. So anything else, Gary? No, I say just want to really appreciate you uh, doing this. And uh, like you say, 20, 29 years you've been doing it. So you've seen a lot of changes as well as we have. So like I say, thank you and uh, and uh, really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, we're in Balloon City here. What's all the balloons for? Oh, these are for the kids. Or adults, whoever really wants them. <laughs> if an adult wants one, you won't say no. Right? I won't say no at all, no. Uh, who am I talking with? <laughs> so this is Ryan Dragoon. Hi, Ryan. Uh, we think I think we chatted with you last year, didn't we? We did, yep. Maybe uh, maybe 25 years ago, too. Uh, yes, so. <laughs> yeah. I looked a little bit better then, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as I recall, you don't work here, right? Uh, nope. I'm at Pfizer now for maybe another month or so and then that that job will be done but uh yeah i used to work here years ago <laughs> and who knows <laughs> yeah who knows is right <laughs> so you're one of the last holdouts at the former wyeth Harris plant that's correct yeah it's uh, it's sad to see it go but i guess uh, that chapter is is over so yeah you know, there's things you can worry about that you can change and things that you can't change so fretting yeah. about that isn't gonna that's right. Yep, you can just wish for the best in the future. And I just appreciate what you had for so long. Uh, definitely appreciative. That was a, a great job for 16 years for myself, so I'm happy to have been there that long. <laughs> yeah. So what are you doing today to help out? Uh, today we're doing a little bit of a spin the wheel giveaway. And uh -huh. then we've got uh, a section here for kids' door prizes and then a section for the adult door prizes. Then at the end there's some free uh, pens and little giveaways and, and popcorn, free popcorn. Free yep. popcorn. And of course yeah. the balloons. And the balloons. <laughs> free balloons, I hope. Yep. You're not charging the kids for the balloons. No. <laughs> I mean, I'll take donations, but no. <laughs> yeah, just don't tell your grandfather. Right? No, I won't tell him. <laughs> All right, who's that woman going around taking pictures there? Uh, yeah, the that's, camera? Yep, that's my wife Erin. She's over there trying to hide from oh, the camera, is, but yeah, yeah, we got her. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> she was very, going around. very shy. <laughs> she was going around with that camera like she knew what she was doing. So I know. Yeah. You don't want her to move in on your uh, your rights. No, no. She's, no. <laughs> well, I've got the video rights. The photography, I guess, is wide open. There. Okay. Yeah. We'll get the hidden that. the hidden view people are here. Yeah. <laughs> it's been pretty steady though, in and out. I can imagine. A lot of people so far. Very happy to. Uh, to see this kind of a crowd and happy to have you here as well yeah now it's customer appreciation so we're hoping that everybody here is a customer but yeah but you don't have to show a ticket when you show up to show <laughs> <laughs> that's right and if they weren't a customer before maybe down the road they will maybe, be. Uh, maybe a future customer right, <laughs> right. <laughs> okay now you're here today now there's a lot of cleaning up before and cleaning up after you're going to be helping out too or that's your uh, yeah, I can definitely help out. I've uh, helped out in the past, but... Uh, okay, I'll make sure they see this video before tomorrow. That's so. right, because I'm sure Dad will hold me to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else uh, that we should know about, Ryan? Huh? No, we're just uh, very thankful for all the support throughout the years and um, look forward to many more years together. All right, looks like your cohort here, Jim Robbins, has taken off. It must be... Yep. He smelled enough pancakes that he decided to go have one probably. Saw the camera and took off, huh? <laughs> you must get that a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. I might just show up whether I got a camera or not, people take off. So <laughs> you never know. Right. Come again, Dean. <laughs> All right, thanks for talking with us. Thank you, Calvin. Look at that, no line at the moment. I can't believe it. First time today, there's no line. Once I got in line, everybody left. 
<laughs> oh, here comes the here comes the delivery boy. He always likes to get on camera. I'm good. You're good. I'm good. Oh, those are big pancakes. Scott must be pouring the the, the mix. All right. Here you go, Calvin. Got your stack ready. <laughs> She's seen me eat before. <laughs> okay, you guys haven't been on this shift all day, have you? I hope all day. We, we have some eggs this year too. Eggs too. I think. Yep. I think the last year maybe we had some eggs. Yep. Brought by Jerome's poultry. Oh, isn't that nice? They're another local business. There. Yep. They support their community quite a bit. Yes, they are. Who are you? Connie. Connie who? Connie Menard. That's the name of that woman who does the uh, announcing at the parade every year, isn't it? Yeah, Mama said this big mouth would come in handy. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you're within three miles, you're not going to hear her. But with anywhere within three miles of the of the stand, you'll hit, you'll hear her, right? That's right. That's it. Big mouth. <laughs> You look forward to that every year. I right? do. Labor Day I weekend. do. Yep, you've got to give back to your community, right? That's right. Yep. So, glad, and everybody appreciates the coverage that you give. So. I gave her a dollar to say that. You want to say something nice and I give you a dollar, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have to. That's for more than a dollar, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice service. Uh, oh, wonderful. I'm just at the wheel there, and your husband, Jim Robbins, is missing, Barb Robbins. Where'd he go? Did you eat in here eating? No, we haven't oh. eaten yet. Oh. Well, you're supposed to keep track of it. Huh? You uh, are supposed, supposed to keep track of it. <laughs> what? Larry Wolf's been through this line three times. At least, and the day is young. And he's coming through again. Nothing else, ladies. All right, here's uh, what it looks like. It's probably, I don't know, 12.30 or so right now. We're going to keep the camera rolling because sometimes the guys back here helping out have a tendency of disappearing on me once the camera comes rolling. There's one right now. God Dragon's leaving. Frenchie Bab Is that Frenchie Babby? Yeah, it looks like Frenchie, yeah. Hey, those look pretty good. Where'd you get those? Carl's not going to talk to him. Look at it. Is this guy. Look at this. Well, at least it looks like you're working. Yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, Todd. Todd? You Jarvis. Got a, Todd Jarvis. That's what I thought. You know, I don't know. I said, that looks just like Todd Jarvis. Yep. I think I saw your wife out there waiting on tables, too. Yep. Did you talk her into this, or you, she talked you into it? No, I think her Uncle Jack talked her into it. <laughs> and she talked you? Yeah. <laughs> so how many years have you been doing this, Todd? Oh, probably 10 or 15. Who's track? Who's track? Earl's been doing it longer. Hey, Earl, yeah, well, he's been around a long time. <laughs> All right, so uh, you've been back here uh, since uh, 9 o'clock this morning? Yeah, we got here about 7.30. Got things going. Are you running low on supplies here? I think Not the crowd has crowd's been bigger than I've ever seen it, probably. It's been steady. Yeah, finally, there was a gap in the line, and... When I got done there, a couple more people started to come through, so... Yep. It's been pretty steady all morning. We'll get a slowdown about 1 o'clock or so. Well, it's closing in on 1, I think. They don't yeah. They don't give you a clock back here, so you never. You don't no, know what time No, Jack, don't let us have a clock. So I, we don't, don't I don't blame them, because <laughs> you'll be watching that clock. Right. All right, I'll let you flip those. Okay. No, just, this is where the elite people eat here. They come in here and they... Uh, Private seating. Are you the egg man, Earl Robinson? They're trying to let me learn this year. Learn to let you learn, huh? What's your normal job? Look at that, one-handed. That's amazing. Let me. Hardly ever gets a shell in there. Yeah, I've had a good run. <laughs> I'll jinx you. You been keeping busy this year? Uh, I'm trying. Oh, there, there you go. There we go. There it goes. Okay. Shells. Once or twice. Shells are free there. Free shells with every egg. So what's your normal job here, Earl? They used to have to cut the sausage to links, but uh, this year they got it already cut. Already linked. Yeah. All right. So that's even better, huh? 
So I gave you well, an that open. was an easy job. I enjoyed that one. <laughs> now you got to work. Yes. I notice you're counting the shakes. There's just a certain amount that you put on there. No. Uh, no? Whatever looks good. <laughs> My eyeball. How many years have you been coming here? I uh, retired in 2004, so it's ever since then. Every year since then? It's certainly a, a community gathering. It's a lot more than just a, a, a customer appreciation day. It's, you know, chances are some of these people out there only see each other a couple times a year, and this might be one of the times that they see each other. So it's a, Especially when you get nice weather like today. Yeah, nice, decent sunshine, and temperature approaching 40. And Is it that warm up? <laughs> it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be in 40. I haven't, I've been pretty much inside, so I don't, don't know. All right, so we'll let you get back to work. What happened to the, the fellow in the middle there? He's usually pretty good at talking with me. Oh, he's a little camera shy. He's camera shy today? All right. Thank you, guys. All right, we've been here for almost four hours. In about two minutes, it's going to be four hours. And we just enjoyed uh, a heaping plate of pancakes and sausage and couple eggs to go with it and sitting across from us was this guy here <laughs> so we're saved the best for last what's your name Daniel Dragoon Daniel Dragoon I think we talked to a young fella only about two feet tall there and he, he said he was related to you you know who that might be no, more than likely my son Cole <laughs> he's not very bashful is he he's over there now <laughs> yeah enjoying the day we're always talking to him for sure and, and I'm sure you weren't much older than that when the, the, you first started roaming around these halls, were you? No, it was about his age. Exactly. Now, I saw the list that uh, your Aunt Jennifer put up of the uh, length of employee, employment here. Am I, am I remembering right? 13 years? Is that yep. right? Is that out of high school? Or is that counting your high school days? No, that's after high school. After high school. That's it's not even that counting long. when I started part-time. That was full-time. That's uh, I realize that uh, that's a... People weren't in kindergarten yet. They they graduated now, 13 years later. <laughs> yep, that's how old you are. are. <laughs> okay, now you uh, you help out in your Uncle Gary's area, is that? Uh, yes, in sales. Yep, lawn and garden and the compact tractors, and slowly moving into the farm machinery. And doing the, the farm equipment too. Yep. There'd be a, a a dan of many trades then, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. So, how's your typical day go? You just uh, Sit by the phone or? Um, wait. Most part, take care of the internet request first. You know, first get in, go through the emails to see who's trying to price things online. Take care of those and then we do get phone calls throughout the day and try and schedule pickup and deliveries. Now we're here on uh, March 27th. Uh, I would hazard a guess that we might just now be getting into your busy season. Is it kind of slow down for you guys in it's the winter months? It normally does. Actually, the service stayed yeah, quite service, busy but, this yeah. winter. The sales slows down during the winter time, but it's starting to pick up now for sure once the weather starts to break. And once that snow is gone and people start deciding they're going to start mowing their lawn again. Or... Yep, that'll be a rush all at once, which we're ready for. We're ready for it. You've been through it before. Yep, same every year. But you can also help with other kind of cleanup too. You got the chainsaws, and we saw over there when we talked to your Uncle Gary. We talked. To, we saw some. Uh, some of the uh, trimmers and other equipment that you guys have. So you have a, a full line of what the, the homeowner might need, right? In yes. addition to yep. the farmer. Yeah, anything from farm to regular homeowner needs. To, uh, you know, chainsaws, trimmers, leaf blowers, and all the yard, all the tools necessary to do yard work. Okay. And I think the, what everybody wants to know is, is Dragoon's farm equipment going to have a team in the softball league this year? Well, we will, yes. <laughs> We'll be back this year. You'll be back. Yeah. Right. Hopefully better than last year. Well, you did all right last year, didn't you? You were yeah. in the playoffs. I yep. think, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you didn't win it, did you? No. No, we didn't win it, but we were there. <laughs> you got to the playoffs. Close. <laughs> yeah, you got there. Almost. You did something to shoot for, right? Yep. It's no fun if you win it every year. That's true. All right. Anything else, Dan, that we should know about here? Because you're going to be the last person we talked to today. So yeah, well, pretty much. Anything that hasn't been said, it's up to you. Well, pretty much wraps it up, and I want to thank you for coming, and going over everything that we've got to offer here. Another happy balloon owner. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you again when next year will be 14 years. And only 11 years after that, it'll be 25. You'll get a clock, you know. Yep. Well, 
be soon enough. <laughs> Time flies, that's for sure. All right. All right. Take, Take care, Dan. All right. We've been here at the annual Customer Appreciation Day at Dragoon's Farm Equipment, and to say a fun time was had by all would be understating it. A, a great thing for the community. It's more than just a, a business here. It's a, it's a way of life here. It's just a, a place that people come and enjoy themselves. So thanks for watching and supporting. Viewer supported local television, hometown cable TV, we think is worthy of your support.